So for those who have been to the island and have traversed as many roads, um, images are everywhere here, from murals to pictures to art. Uh, it's everywhere. Now with us is Grant Luning, a PhD candidate in communications at San Diego, uh, University of California, San Diego, to talk a little bit about his research into the images of Jeju. So thank you very much for being with us today, all the way from San Diego, Grant. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We were introduced to Grant uh, via our good buddy, buddy of the show, um, Joey, yeah. um, who you had met several years ago, I guess, at this point, right, Grant? Yeah, I think 2019. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, it's really great to see you finally after all the correspondence we've done online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start at the at the beginning. And since you are studying the images of Jeju, why did you decide, or what was it about Jeju that made you want to look into this aspect of the island? Well, I had lived here and I had visited as a tourist. Um, and I had uh, I had a week or two off and I decided to bike around Jeju. I thought that would be like oh. the coolest thing. Um, <laughs> I'm from, the middle of North America, Minnesota, as far as you can get from an ocean. So the idea of just being by an ocean and, and spending every day by the ocean was, was so cool. So I decided to do a bike trip around and I just noticed in particular the murals. Mm. You know, there are murals everywhere that I went and I was just fascinated by them. The, the murals on the city streets and the murals on the you know, the sea walls and the murals yeah. and the ports, and yeah. especially the murals on the fish factories. Mm. Uh, and I just yep. got obsessed. I wanted to know, why do these exist? What is, you know, some of these murals are enormous. Some of them are beautiful. Some of them are horrible. Horrible. <laughs> why did someone <laughs> why make are these they there? Things? Why did why someone did actually exist? put that? Yeah, yeah. Grant, when you, when you, when, when that became something, you're like, okay, wait a minute. How did you take that from just being interested into actually finding your way to inquire about these? Like, how did you make that leap? I was really interested in the henya, right? Okay, because okay. they are this traditional practice. It's a gendered practice. So it's a woman's practice. It's a Jeju. It's a very local Jeju practice. Mm -hmm. But the henya were also some of the first Koreans to go abroad and to work abroad in the early, you know, even back in the Joseon period. Yeah. So um, there was this kind of practice, but then there was this modern industrial practice where uh, there's a lot of immigrants, um, a lot of people, not just not from Jeju, but not from Korea who come and do this work and almost exclusively male. So, you know, you have these, these divers who are subject to so many photographs mm. and murals, mm. and then you have the men who are working inside and there seemed to be a, a big shift and, yeah. uh, that, that had happened between these two kinds of fishing. Oh, and yeah, go ahead, Daryl. No, no, you go first. I can hold on to my question. Oh, Alexis froze for a second. So that's, that's yeah, fascinating okay. because a lot of people don't actually realize that there are quite a few migrant workers on Jeju uh, in the industry. Cause you see the, the foreigner teachers and the, mm -hmm. you know, but there's actually like thousands of people who are working the fields and the farms and uh, yeah. the fisheries, as, as you mentioned. Now it's interesting about the murals. Cause I saw some of the pictures that you have taken in the work of these faded old and sometimes decrepit like murals. Do you know why they were painted and when they were painted and who painted them? Yes. So there's a That's whole story to this. Yeah. Uh, but the, the short version is around uh, the lead up to 2002 and the free international city. Mm. Um, Jeju realized how many more tourists were going to come. So things had been percolating. There had been murals. The, um, the mural on the city hall, yeah, I think mm. was the late 90s, it was 97. Right, right. But leading up to 2002, they realized that all of a sudden tourists weren't going to be located in the one or two spaces they had been. Jungmoon being like, that's where the tourists. The main tourism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all of a sudden they were going to be around the island. And uh, these old fish factories had a problem. One, they were really ugly because mm -hmm. they're made out of a rebar skeleton and then a concrete skin around it. Yeah. 
and the sea air just pulls the rust out through the concrete. So it bleeds like red metal. And it's so industrial in a place that's marketing itself as very natural and beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they are located right by the shore too. Oh, right the on part. the, right yeah. on the coastal, the most beautiful coastal roads. And, and then <laughs> yeah. you just have, you're just like, Oh, and here we are. Yeah. 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 yeah it's such a symbol of, of, that there were decades where nobody thought that this was a place where people would come. It was no. just convenient to put the fish factories there. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason it's convenient is because they need to dump all of the extra water and waste and, and waste. food at the end of the day, mm -hmm. which makes it a perfect place to go fishing. Because mm -hmm. when they flush that out, all yeah. the fish come. It's yep. great fishing. So they had this problem where the tourists are going to go exactly in the ugliest, most industrial place. <laughs> How do we fix this? Mm -hmm. So there were several programs. I think the program now is called the Sea Dream. It's run oh, through the, the fisheries ministry. Um, it's been through several iterations, but it they basically do beautification of um, fisheries. Of so ugly stuff. Especially in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of of you know now it's mostly the the small towns that that mm, are mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. more impoverished, um, and it's it's doing that kind of uh, beautiful clean up work. But, yeah, yeah. So, but leading up to two thousand two, it was the these factories and uh, Nam Jeju, the the old uh, Jeju County or the old South Jeju County before Sogupo took it mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. They invested really heavily in let's get all of our fish factories painted so we can get these people to come visit. Mm. Um, so a lot of them are from this like 2000 to 2004 period, which is why they look really old. Grungy. They've, they've, <laughs> they've, they have they've not aged well, this. but yeah. in a good way, I think some of them in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how much funding was allotted for this? Uh, I don't know how much funding was allotted for those. The, uh -huh. the funding Just, schemes are always very complicated, but uh -huh. um, yes. The, for example, today, if you look at the, the sort of city murals um, that are on like the walls of houses or around mm -hmm. um, parks, those are painted for around 70,000 to 150,000 won oh. per meter. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay. And they're, they're professional painters who their whole yeah. job is just to paint those things. So extrapolate back through 20 yeah. years and inflation and economic growth. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's really fascinating though. Thank you. I'm glad you knew the, the cost the of per meter. Of that. That's really interesting. Great. When you were, when you did start to do that, were you able to meet any of the painters or become acquainted with any of, of them? Yeah. So that was one of the most exciting days of my life yeah. because yeah. Okay. I had been, you know, I, I, I teach and I study during the year. So the only times I can come are in the summer and I would usually come later in the summer or during the rainy season when right. they're not painting. And in, I think it was 2018, um, I got to come much earlier than I had before. And I came around a corner and I saw there were three, I think, no, there are four guys painting mm -hmm. and I was just like, the people who paint these are here. I found them. I've met them. You know, I had called the phone numbers that are sometimes written on them. Right. Nobody picks up. But, no. Um, so I finally found the guys who did it. And I just spent, uh, I spent almost a month just sitting there with them every day, watching them paint, you know, running wow. to go get them drinks. Yeah. Um, they let me paint one petal of one flower, which is my favorite <laughs> Pedal in JG. <laughs> Were they confused? Like, why is this foreigner yeah, why is this wagyu, why why is this wagyu hanging out with us? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and also because, you know, they're, you know, what my questions were kind of about art, but I understood mm -hmm. that, you know, this isn't your art practice. This isn't what you love. Yeah. Um, and they kept, you know, trying to say, like, this is not what I love. This is mm -hmm. not my art practice. And I was like, I know, that's yeah. why it's interesting. <laughs> that's why it's you interesting, know? exactly. Uh, someone paints a beautiful painting because they love it. I think we all kind of get, okay, that's why you did it. But mm -hmm. if you paint hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meters of Jeju yeah. symbolism, yeah. and you're not from Jeju, you don't really care about it, it's just a job. Like that's a very weird kind of 
psychology to be in. You yeah. have a Especially very interesting artist. relationship. Yeah. 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 It's a very you know, interesting have, idea of paintings, the aura these paintings give off. Millions of dollars worth of meh. Let's just all yeah. around change you. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's not uh, unintentional because the interesting thing about these murals is that they are mostly designed not to attract your attention, but to repel it. Oh, They're designed okay. to sort of let your eye sort of slide off and kind of become generic. And the more murals there have been, right, I'm sure the, the fewer murals catch your eye. Yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. Because the one it in is. Jeju City doesn't mm. repel your attention. I don't know if it's very good necessarily, but it actually attracts it. So you're saying these murals are like corporate art, like for businesses and things like that. They're just well, there. there there are some. Mm -hmm. um, the the other side of this, this would be sort of there is this program for the the fish factories, mm -hmm. but the the main murals that you'll see in town, the ones that are on people's houses, the yes. ones that are through the Ole neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those come out of um, in 2013. There was this big push first under Park and Hay, but then it was picked up again under President Moon. Um, it was the, the promotion and support of urban regeneration. And they have these, all these neighborhoods identified as downwardly mobile. So they aren't the neighborhoods that are just trashed. They aren't just, you know, the neighborhoods that are going to be bulldozed. They're neighborhoods that used to be kind of nice, but aren't nice anymore. And they have all of these rankings for the things that can be done to make these neighborhoods better, to spruce them up. Turns out the cheapest and easiest one is just paint some murals on things. You don't need to fix the sewers. You don't need to fix the road. You can just put up some murals and the score goes up. Mm -hmm. And so then your neighborhood score goes up and then the city score goes up and everybody's, everybody's score goes up. <laughs> it's like a video so game. They're like kind of like city. camouflage. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah, you know, you find yeah, yeah, the cheap code. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So these are two, because I remember, you know, Jeju sometimes mind boggling how much money Jeju has. Um, they, they, you know, I, I remember when they were fixing these neighborhoods up, they were also giving grants to artists to come live in some of these neighborhoods and create uh, art cafes or to do creations. So they were just dropping art grants to people to come, come stay here, come paint this, come do graffiti over here, you know, uh, mind boggling sometimes the money that, that JG allots uh, for these projects. Mm -hmm. So Darryl, yeah, you... definitely. There's, there's so much money that gets passed through different veins, but it's all just, um, I think what's, what's sort of interesting in the results is it's kind of uncontrolled. It just sort of goes uh -huh. everywhere. Yes. Yes. And so these aren't consistent murals. There isn't a consistent style or quality. No. It's all over the place. And you really can right. see the difference in uh, the the painters as well. You could be walking through, you know, like the the market down in Tapdong in, in that neighborhood. And even on, you know, one wall to the other wall, you obviously can see it's not the same painter. And, you, you know, and the time frame is different because this one looks a little faded while this one is bright and shiny. Mm -hmm. So it's an ongoing thing it seems like anyways it's never ending mm -hmm. yeah this is fascinating I, I yeah, have go ahead, before i get to my next question i want i've heard and maybe this from joey i'm not i'm not sure where i heard this saying from that jeju has the largest mural budget in the world is that a myth or is that just or a saying i i wouldn't know how i to have check no that. idea yeah um i i mean the the thing is there are so many mural villages on the mainland, um, yeah. but the main difference is that they're not as self-focused. They're not as consistent in their theme. So they'll just be sort of random pictures. And actually I, I did notice um, because I came back last summer for the first time in a couple of years because of COVID obviously, mm -hmm. that that had started to become much more prominent in JJ murals. Do you mean, do you mean like our self-promotion of JJ was much more prominent no. to you? Oh. No, just the, lack of like oh, before okay. every mural had been oh, a Jeju okay. symbol, Jeju iconography. And then now there were just oh. random pictures. And there, oh, there had been some before, yeah. but it was definitely much more frequent. That's really cool that there's that much of a difference that you actually were able to recognize yeah. that. Yeah, that's cool. I would I never think about that. 
So talking a little bit more specifically about your research into it, what have you learned about the images of Jeju? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> one of the things that I think is really important to understand about these murals is how they distribute space and how they, they guide you from one place to another. And the kinds of ways that they ask you to relate to a place like Jeju. Because on the one hand, you're given all these symbols but these symbols get decontextualized and they get pulled out and they just become kind of repetitive. And so many people that I ask, when I ask them like the murals on Jeju, they're everywhere. And yet most people couldn't name one or they couldn't, you know, there's the Jeju city hall mural. And that's very specific because that's before any of this started. Right. But these other ones, they don't have a place. They become slippery and they just slide off and that's exactly the opposite of what a mural is supposed to do, right? right? Because a mural is a painting that is stuck. It is in place. It, it doesn't move like a photograph does. Mm. It asks to be in a place and asks you to join it. So there are a couple murals that, um, you know, Alexis, you, you brought up, you know, some of these start to look grungy, but they look at, in a interesting or beautiful it, way. Very, exactly. They look part of now the earth of Jeju. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's exactly it. They, when they are given time to breathe, or maybe just, it's just happenstance. It just happened that they look this way. Those start to look really beautiful because they've Agreed. gotten their place back. Agreed. You know, they, they are one of a kind, they are singular. And the question of what is a tourist place? I think is really wrapped up in that. Is is a tourist place something that is easily consumed and you just slide through Jeju? And you know, I know so many people who go through there to get the stamp on their passport, yes. especially if they can't go to the mainland and get that Korea stamp. Um, you know, it's just a, a pure sliding through the place. Or is it a place where you get stuck and a piece of it gets stuck to you, and you kind of build a, a symbiotic relationship? You're such a poet, Grant. I really like your, I really like the way you speak. It's, it's a very, it makes me more intrigued by the murals when you were talking about how it sort of becomes, you're supposed to be a part of the mural and that I remember, well, cause like you said, they, they sort of have faded over time, but I remember there was a time when I was driving around the coastal roads and I was stopping to take photos of these, these murals. Cause I was fascinated on these fish factories. I would just be driving and then all of a sudden, wham, bam, here's this fish factory with this gorgeous faded mural, like you're, you know, like you said, and I would be taking photos of them. Now I am the opposite. It is now, like you just said, now for me, I'm just driving by and I almost don't even notice them anymore. You, you, you wrote a paper about the invisibility of, did I say that right? The invisibility of, uh, of these murals. Mm -hmm. And that's really mm -hmm. fascinating that, you know, that now it was such a part of my life photographing them just for fun and now that i don't even notice them anymore that's really interesting yeah i don't I didn't even I, think that i didn't notice them i never noticed the murals myself like i never think mm. of jeju and murals even though there's an old one on in jungmoon on a building here that's really faded of like the waterfall that's like just down the street and it's, it's yeah, massive yeah. and it's all yeah. faded it's not very good and now that you mentioned it's probably just to be like it's a big building so let's try to <laughs> camouflage it, it yeah yeah really right well, i think with the olays with the the generation of the olay as well I, now you're going through you know old, old farming old farm roads or country mm -hmm. roads and especially when you come to you'll really notice murals popping up because they're they're decorating the walls oftentimes of the buildings as you're passing them on the olay so that's a whole nother thing have you ever did you walk the olays grant when you were here yes and actually to my topic favorite yeah. No, no, no. My favorite murals of all time are uh, the ones that are out there, and they are the water tower murals. Uh, I was oh, going to ask you yeah, about that. Yes, the, yeah, yeah. The they the are. Parks. Yeah, in the parks, mm -hmm. in the farms. They're the they're family. everywhere, and they have like they're sunflowers everywhere. on them and things like that. Yeah. Why are those your favorite? Uh, because they are they are definitely much more in the fish factory mold. Mm -hmm. They're not um, they're not just sort of everywhere. 
They are, for very similar reasons, right, they're covering up industrial equipment that's in the middle of this natural space. But they are so varied. Um, they are, um, I don't know, there there's so many different topics, but they're also much more local. So the fish factories have tons of great iconography, but they're usually water, fish, mm -hmm. you know, they're, yeah. they're, yeah. their content is kind of generic, but you'll see some of the, and, and it's changing very rapidly. I think they've stopped actually painting oh. the, um, the water towers because now they just paint them green, just sort of simple camouflage. It's just green. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but some of the older ones would be very specific to the village and the villages out there and the farms are sometimes just a um, 100 people. You know, they're very small. They're very local. And I thought that was really cool that, yeah. that you don't get that anywhere, anywhere else. Do you have yeah. a favorite one, a favorite mural in Jeju? I do. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a heartbreaking story, but it is, to me, it's a mural that has everything. And it's a, it's a fish factory in Suwon-ri. Mm. And it's, it's one of these invisible murals. It's one of these like very hard to see murals. If you're actually on the coastal road, the, uh, the fish factory is, is a little bit back from the road. It's, it's one of the ones that's further away, probably like 200, 300 meters away. So if you're actually looking for it, you won't see it. You won't see that the mural's there. Until you come around the corner and then across a couple fields, you'll see this thin line of a, of a mural. And that's what I saw. I said, okay, I got to go over there and see what's up. And as I got closer, there was a huge long wall. I think I've measured it and it's, it's probably 400 meters of, of painting. And it had been painted with this not very great paint. Um, that wasn't really designed for the weather. And it was mostly blue because it was this fish scene. And when the rebar would sort of seep out, it would put all of these little crackles of orange through the blue. <laughs> so the color was like an impossible color. It's a color you can't paint, you can't make, you can't buy. It barely fits inside your vision. It's just so shocking and strange. And there were these beautiful gauzy fish that had been painted all over it. The person who made it, and I've been looking for them for years, if anybody listening to this knows about the Suan Ri mural, let me know. But they just were a very talented painter. And they had put these very beautiful and well done, uh, very complicated naturalistic fish. And, you know, the, the combination of the sun and the, the air and the fact That's that this was so hard to see was really interesting. And I walk around the corner and there was another stretch of mural and there was a farmer there. And I asked the farmer what he thought of the mural. And we were standing two feet away and he said, what mural? And I was like, every day Dude. you're here. And yeah. this mural yeah. is right next to me. Um, and I, you know, I was like, I'm sure I'm just using the wrong word, but no, when I find the point, it's like, oh yeah, the mural. Um, he had just been using it to, to put his racks up against it, like uh, where they grow the seedlings. And I realized this mural was beautiful because it was kind of the perfect combination of byuk and hua. It is wall and art. It serves this function as a wall, but it's also art, but it's kind of not both at the same time. Because I mm. came just for the mm. art. Mm. Um, the fish factory just cared about the wall. The farmer mm. just cared about a place to lean his rack. Mm. And then about, yeah, it must have been 2019. Every year I go back and I visit the mural um, and I take tons of pictures because last time I didn't get everything perfect and now I need the perfect picture. <laughs> and I turn the corner and it was covered with thick black tar. Oh. Just all the way down, lines of thick black tar, not the whole thing, but just thick lines that had sealed up the cracks because this is not an art gallery. It's a fish factory. It's a work. And yeah. the walls were rotting and water was pouring through and it was damaging the structural integrity. And so they just needed to fix it. And wow. the, the same thing that was bringing out that impossible color of this orange slash blue was also destroying the wall. And 
So I thought that was a really, that was everything all at once. That is this incredibly difficult, beautiful moment where you recognize the art is temporary. It's not the kind of thing that lasts forever. Mm. And that's what made it in the first place. That's what mm. made it beautiful. Mm. But that's also why it, why it had to, it's not gone, but it's why it had to change drastically. Mm. That's fascinating. That's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I really think, I think the most thing that I took from reading your, your paper and then talking to you in general was just like you said, I, I, I guess I, I, I mean, you notice murals, but design for invisibility, you know, that mm -hmm. to me is so unique that, that, that is the purpose. You know, you, like you said, you don't think you, a mural is supposed to like, but to design something to be invisible, mm -hmm. to create something. So you don't look at it is just a absolutely fascinating topic. Yeah. I can yeah. see why you would be obsessed with this for, you know, the years that you have been. Uh, Grant, yeah. I want you to, when do you have plans to come back sometime soon? Or you got so much yes. going on? Uh -huh. um, I, I definitely have to come back. Um, yeah. So hopefully October. Um, okay. That's October or January. Okay. Mm -hmm. Grant, I really, and I didn't mention this to you because I kind of wanted to just save it. In my neighborhood, I live in a really old school neighborhood in the city, um, Sosada. And in the last year and a half, and I have no idea, but I'm obsessed, even before I met you and started talking to you, I'm obsessed why my neighborhood has been picked. And it's just, a, it's just two, two, two roads. And they are my two, my, this road and the, and the road I live on are covered in murals now. Absolutely, uh, Song Bung Sun, uh, the Brother Islands. I mean, we have paintings, and just Song Bung Sun was just. Uh, and I wanted to get a picture of the dude, but I was always in a hurry, and I was like, I gotta send this to Grant. He just was out there, and he he threw up this absolutely gorgeous painting in three days, mm. and it's Song Bung Sun. And the closer you get the unattractive it is. And then you step back and you're like, this is a magnificent work, but clearly who, I have no idea why my neighborhood was picked. I have no idea what the intention, because these are not designed for invisibility. These are very specifically want your attention, but I don't know why. I have no idea why. It, it, and why this neighborhood and why all this money and why on these walls of these houses, you know, cause we have um, the houses back and we have yards and then we have the brick walls with the gate that you come into your courtyard and that's what they're mm -hmm. painting, but why? And I'm obsessed with it. So when you come down, I, I, I'm going to put you to work. You know, and go I just had a, down. I just had an idea. I mean, I, I should probably mention this off air, but we could like uh, arrange a me, you and Jeju tour where Grant can point Ooh. out some of them. Not to put you on the spot, mm -hmm. you could be like, screw that idea. Say, I was like, we're putting him to work immediately. He hasn't even been, playing. we're like, yeah, sure. come on, Grant, let's do this. Yeah, oh. it's just, yeah. Mm. It's, well, mm. I love, I love getting people to look at them because, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, art can be really beautiful and that's great, but most art isn't. And so if you want to think about art in your world, you need to be willing to look at the things that aren't beautiful and aren't mm. interesting and mm. Korea, because of the um, because of a couple different reasons, one being the law on the mandatory investment in public art. So any big uh, construction has to put, I think, like 0.5 percent into public art. Mm -hmm. um, and because of tourism has some of the world's greatest collections of bad art and bad public art. So it's always this opportunity to ask, OK, what's really going on here? And Alexis, I'm actually curious because mm -hmm. one of the things we haven't talked about is something called crime prevention through environmental design. Right. The, the broken yes. window syndrome, uh, the, the theory. Yeah. 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 And that is a huge part of the uh, the reason that these um, that these neighborhoods are targeted for murals, oh. because murals do a couple of things. They pre graffiti. So if you're going to come and, and paint on a wall. You don't want to do it on the mural wall because you, the space is sort of already taken up. Right, right. You, If you do come as a tourist, then, you know, tourists love to leave their names behind. It is a practice that is literally as old as human culture. There are tourist graffitis from 3,500 years ago. But it disrupts that because you come to weird. Jeju and now you have Jeju symbols. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, I'm kind of disrespecting the place that I want to leave my name behind. My name on, uh -huh. So there's a weirdness. Uh -huh. 
And with the colors, it makes you much more visible to surveillance. Because oh. if you have a oh. dark wall and dark, oh. you know, dark clothes, wow. you can't be seen. But if you have a bright wall, You're... then I know the person standing there. Holy moly. I didn't even think about that. Oh, so this is actually so, isn't the broken window, uh, broken window theory. It's, it's different. It's a... It's it's part of a whole family of things. It is definitely adjacent. It is part mm. of that that same mm. way mm. of thinking about it. Um, it's yeah. It's kind of the flip flip side of that coin that you do need to make things nicer so that people will um, not feel a kind of psychological compulsion. But I tend to think that's a little <laughs> bit um, that's a little bit overplayed because there are much more practical and direct reasons why you know. And the surveillance one I think is the most. Wow. important one you're, yeah you're especially on jeju visible. because yeah. people don't graffiti here like it's, yeah. it's not yeah. really a, a thing but the surveillance thing is really interesting because of the small town yeah. of these places and uh the foreigners the, the, the foreigners as in people not from those towns you know walking around that's that's a really interesting point do mm-hmm. you know if that for a fact that that was one of the motivations behind some of the murals yes yeah that's that's um part of the the official government descri- um documents and and um academic accounts of why um the murals specifically are a kind of neighborhood beautification because yeah. there's a lot of things you can do mm-hmm. to make your neighborhood beautiful um statues statues are a yeah. lot easier to put up yeah but they don't yeah. have all these other features to them and it, um. now that you're saying this like god now that i think about it talking about the gaudiness of some of these paintings on the you know the murals in these neighborhoods now that really kind of makes sense because and I don't you know I'm not trying to insult any painters but they are partic- some of them are particularly gaudy yeah. <laughs> and and you're like why would you do that right here why would you make this bright vibrant you know not particularly Definitely. attractive painting so that that would make sense more wow I'm wow, definitely going to pay oh. attention more to the yeah. murals that go because right? like there's right. there, I just blind to them. I don't well just blind. Yeah. Well, and like and like I used to not be blind to them, uh, but now I feel like I'm driving on coastal roads and I just sort of just like you know, it just is in the background feature to me now. So yeah. obviously, yeah, wow, fascinating. You know, Grant, we were talking about your favorite. I, I do want to mention for our listeners, I was hoping, and I didn't I kind of mentioned this, but I uh, hopefully we'll get your permission, Grant. But I would uh, I think we're gonna do a contest where it would be great that we are going to throw one of your photos of one of your one of your scenes and have our listeners and we'll we'll announce more of this on Instagram but have one of our listeners try to identify that where it is on the yeah. island and the so, prize will mm-hmm. be a hearty handshake from yours truly <laughs> No, we're going to give a prize, but I definitely because of your topic of them being invisible, I mm-hmm. really wanted to kind of change that dynamic and just see, you know, especially because most of our listeners are obviously English speakers and, uh, you know, probably teachers and, and, and tourists around. So to see if they notice some of these murals and if it's something that they actually are like, you know what, I know where that one is. So, so it'll yeah. be a really interesting project or, you know, contest. Now that we're running out, well, now that we're running out of time, we're running out of time, but is there anything else you'd like to mention that we haven't asked or is anything interesting about the images of Jeju, not necessarily murals? Um, well, there's there's whole sprawling fields that we could get into, but I think the, the piece that I think is really interesting is um, what do these images, the murals, but also the photographs and also the tourist brochures, how do they kind of function as an autobiography? Because a lot of them are ways of defining what Jeju is, a way of renaming Jeju or depicting Jeju. And, you know, the, the famous icons of Jeju, Dal Harabang, mm-hmm. um, the Henya, um, the water carrying woman, like these are things that are produced by the pictures that we look at. So when people are looking at the images around them, and especially the images created for tourism, I think it's always important to ask yourself, what is the Jeju that's being created there? Mm. Because Mm. every one of those images Mm. adds to a pile Mm. and adds another layer, another residue on Jeju, and it does change the place. And so we should be attentive to and also careful of the kinds of images that we 
produce or the kinds of images that we um, casually pass by, but also the kinds of images that that tend to actually damage a place or tend to um, maybe trivialize things that are really important about Jeju by turning them into cartoons. And sometimes cartoons I was going to say that. The art yes. cartoon Henyo, for sure. Yes, the cartoon Henyo, which is all over. You know what? I actually, um, we, uh, I would like to ask you one more question, Daryl. How could we? Yeah, we'll just take a quick a break right question. now. We'll just take a okay. quick break. Korean, I do want to, I want to, because I think it's important. And so let's go to cut to commercial. Let's come right back. And now we're back with Grant. Uh, so thanks again for being with us, Grant. Uh, we're talking about the iconography and the images of Jeju, specifically mostly about uh, murals. And we left off with Alexis about to ask a, a very a pertinent question. question. Well, because Grant, you were just talking about being careful about what we um, put into the world, per se, right? I am very curious if when these murals are commissioned is the artist given the choice with what they put up or is okay, each question. neighborhood say it says to the artist this is the purpose this is what we want from you or are they given a choice do you know um yes so there are some places like um Dumengi alley mm -hmm. are you familiar with Dumengi alley mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that is heavily um artist pitched um, okay. Dumeng Alley is this big, um, th that is definitely not a mural village that you're supposed to not see. You are supposed to see the giant red lips glued to the side of a house. Um, Look at Daryl's face. He's like, what? <laughs> that's not a Jigmoon. I have no idea what this thing is. Yeah. It's a very garish, wild mm -hmm. carnival very. in the middle of uh, a residential neighborhood um, kind of mural village concept, the, the kind of thing that was in like Iwa and, and Seoul. Um, but for the neighborhood murals, it used to be very top down and the neighborhood council who was in charge of the money would decide. Okay. And residents were getting pretty upset because it was their yeah. houses that were being painted. And their neighborhoods and that they see them. every day. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. So over the last 10 years, there's been a pretty strong shift toward um, a combination of the neighborhood will pick a bunch of topics oh. and then the homeowners will, um, they'll contribute to that. Then the artists will come and they'll make some pitches for, okay, you said you wanted um, uh, uh, like uh, you said, you wanted a Halasan mural. Okay, uh -huh. so this is what I would do for a Halasan, or this is my drawing. Um, and sometimes the homeowners have a lot of power. I've seen some. I, I was at a mural painting where the the older woman who lived there just brought out a picture of her grandson playing with the dog and was like, "This is what you're gonna paint. You're gonna paint oh my, my family portrait oh my on the wall." Oh um, I don't really care about the neighborhood list of approved images. This <laughs> is the one that I want. Oh my God, um, that's funny. That's awesome. Okay. So that is sometimes wild. it leans all the way that way. Sometimes yeah. it's just, um, you know, I, I talked to a couple of homeowners. They're like, I just don't care. Just okay. Make okay. it nice. Just put whatever you want on there. Okay. So, so it really depends on the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. It really depends on the neighborhood. Um, and you will know, you will be able to tell the kinds of murals where um, they're commissioned from higher up. The higher up they are, the okay. more okay. it's like there's an artist involved. Okay, the ones where you start like to see plaques. Okay. There's a little plaque with a name. Then it's oh. maybe a little higher up than just the neighborhood administration. It's designed it more. Culture. Oh. Yeah, yes. I'm really okay. interested in in the fact that the the murals, like what you said before about we have to be careful about because they're going to be an autobiography. They're going to actually, oh. yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's this probably aspect of it dictating the character of Jeju and of these places, as opposed to the people who live in them now mm -hmm. dictating what the places what actually gets, are. Yeah. Well, and then, and, and then even going to that, like, d does the artist want their name on it, you know, or they're just like, you know, this wasn't designed for art. Like you're saying, there's not that, you know, like they're like, no, I was just, this is just paying my bills. This isn't one. Cause my neighborhood, I'm like looking out the window as if you could see it. My neighborhood is specifically, um, Oh my God, my brain sometimes just shuts off. Is scenery, Jeju scenery. 
Oh, I think mm -hmm. we're frozen. Yeah. No, so it's no, very specific. Uh, <laughs> it's very, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. And I would say there's no placards. So, but I would say that this is an artist. This is his mm -hmm. forte. He is very good at what he does. Um, and you can tell that, you know, with what he, I mean, his, 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 um, interpretation of Sung Bung Sun is absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, when you get up, close to it. I'm like, I don't, you know, like it's so crazy how a mural changes when you're up close to it and you're like, well, this is really just not, but then you take five steps back and it is absolutely gorgeous. He's got like wispy fog and clouds that go, but when you stand next to it and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Oh, it's, it's really, really interesting. Yeah. Wow. Grant, you have opened my, my, I'm all these like little details are now coming into yeah. my head about like, why would they have chosen this or this or this or yeah. Yeah. In wow. in that vein, this will probably have to be our last question. But in that vein, okay. I mean, it's probably no, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there Taking any a lot of grand style. images that concern you when it comes to this mm. autobiogra autobiography of JJ? There are some that I have been particularly bothered by, but I think those usually kind of fizzle out because people don't pick up the the ones that are. Um, I don't even know how to articulate it. One that really immediately bothered me was when somebody combined the Jeju pig and um, the Henyo. And it wasn't just like that, 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 you know, it was, it wasn't that, that it was calling uh, the Henyo pigs or anything. It was just like, these are two, two parts different. of, of Jeju iconography that are separate and yeah. mixing them kind of muddles the the thing that makes Jeju interesting, which is that sometimes it's the same people doing both jobs, but that there is this split, there, there is this separation. So at the image level, that felt sort of weird and just wrong. But the I think the deeper uh, issue is we all have kind of images of our homes or images of the place that we live lingering in the back of our heads. But what has happened because of the huge investment in murals is that every single image and every single symbol on Jeju has been unearthed and brought to the surface. Mm. And I have talked to cultural workers and to mural painters who talk about like, you know, going through old books and resurrecting symbols that nobody has, mm. nobody remembers. They're from 150 years ago. And they try and do a cultural production around them, but that's how far it's gone. Is that all of the all of the symbols that there can be of Jeju right now have been unearthed and are just on there on the surface. So people don't have the kind of private access to these symbols that they might have. They don't have the the access to them that isn't explicit, that isn't defined, that isn't you know there isn't anything hazy in the back of the head anymore. Mm because it's all on the surface. And I think mm -hmm. that can be really dangerous because then it's not yours. You know, it That's isn't local anymore. Yeah, yeah. Is there a threat that this will, that these murals and how they're coming up and how there's been like such a period of them being built, is there a threat to future icons and future images of Jeju being like snuffed mm -hmm. out? I think there can be a kind of repetitive element to it, but- That's, yeah. I, I, I have great, uh, I take great comfort in the brutal sea air and the squalls <laughs> and the typhoons and the sun that, you know, just as much as these things unearth and render sort of every day and boring, they also have this huge opportunity to become something different, to mutate. Difference. Mm. And Mm. There's definitely mutations that have happened that I've even seen since I uh, first came to Jeju of, of mm. symbols interconnecting. You know, the bad one might be the um, the pig and the henya, but the orange and the harabang, like yes, and all of a sudden there's yes. orange harabangs all the all, yes. all over the place, right? Okay. That's that's something I didn't see when I first came here. So there's wow. also these intermixings. Um, which, you know, that's maybe not the greatest icon in the world, but it at least shows that there's always this yeah. cross-pollination that's that's building. 
um, around these things. And, you yeah. know, from a metaphorical point of view, um, when you talk about how the island actually is contributing to the creation of these murals just by it's the a, weather or just by battering it, you mm -hmm, know, it, mm -hmm. no matter what you put up there in a way, Jeju will reclaim it. Reclaim that's, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, I hope, I hope Jeju, we were talking about like what bothers you. You know, what really bothers me is that when we mentioned it earlier is that cartoon, I really, really do not enjoy the cartoon Henyo or the cartoon Dal Haldabongs. I don't know what about police. it. I don't know what about it really gets under my skin, maybe because Jeju itself is so beautiful that I don't I don't find it attractive to change the images into that sort of way. I It really gets under my skin and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there is there is one cartoon and, and it's probably one of the most prominent painters. Mm -hmm of murals that you'll see mm -hmm. around Jeju, which I think is really interesting and I would love to know more. Um, uh, it's a it's a painting company, Jeju Byakwa, and it is a husband and wife team. Yeah. And they paint a lot of the murals around schools. And they're very cartoony, yeah. but they're also very historical. And they're very pedagogical yes. and very educational. And when I talked to him, I, he was busy painting. He did not want to talk to me at all. Uh, he did not want to let me sit there for two weeks and watch him do his work. <laughs> but um, while we were really just talking for a few people. minutes, <laughs> yeah, they're, they do not want to be paid attention to because they're yeah. just doing their job. They're just doing their job, yeah. But um, I asked, you know, what, 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 I don't even remember the question, but he, he answered that he was doing storytelling. And he was hey. doing storytelling in the traditional Jeju sense of keeping culture alive by, by talking. And yet he does this yeah. in this very cartoony way. Yeah. And so this isn't the, the kind of the cartoons that you're talking about. Right. But it is to me a great example of how in some ways these are mutations of traditional Jeju practices, like retelling yeah. the old stories, but this time doing it on murals and for school yeah. children and in places where Maybe the tourists aren't going to know. Maybe the tourist eyes will slide over, but the locals' eyes will say, I actually know that story, and that's my family's uh, story, or that's uh, my town's story. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. Not well, it's so good to talk to you, Grant. It, it really does, like, just open mm -hmm. up the world again of, uh, of all these, because, like you said, they're all over Jeju, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. And now it's time we get to our, our final segment, the, the Jeju 5, which is when we're going to ask you five questions, yeah. rapid fire. Mm -hmm. Answer them about um, your likes and dislikes about Jeju yeah. Island, okay? So I like this with Grant because he's more, he's got this tourist perspective because Grant never lived here for, you know, you spent a lot of time here, but this will be interesting. So where on the island do you like to go when you, to get away? Hey, well. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. Number two, what is your go-to beverage of choice at the Marks? Is it soju, muckley, or beer? Or anything. Uh, or anything, alcohol. sure. Uh, definitely beer. Okay. And okay. beer. Of I'm too beer? old. The hangovers are too hard. <laughs> Any type of beer? Height, cast, the new um, to show up? I'm I came to Korea long enough ago that there was only height and cast. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I end up drinking uh Jeju beer. Uh, partly because the cans are pretty. They're so yeah. cool. <laughs> They're so cool. Yeah. yeah and, and you're right. talking to part owners of the company. Yes. We invested. I know this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Next question. The coast, Hala or Orem? Uh, Orem. Okay. okay. Oh, me too. I'm an Orem person. Now this, this might be kind of pointless question, but what's yeah. something you know about Jeju that most others don't? Would it be the murals? <laughs> Yes, I, it would be the murals. <laughs> yeah. What what yeah. else do I know? Um, uh, I know that um, there's always a mural around the corner. If you keep your eyes out, there will be another mural somewhere in almost every town, yeah. and um, there is no end to them. I did. I when I originally came, I was going to document every mural, and I very quickly realized that that was <laughs> never going to happen. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Okay. If and there was one thing about JJ you would change, what would it be?
easier bike routes, easier and safer bike routes. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Okay. Well, Grant, such a pleasure to be talking to yeah. you. Such a pleasure. Thank you for, we definitely took a lot of your time. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much for that. No, this thank you. Yeah. 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 It, we'll have to, we'll, we'll talk to you off air later about when you come back and we'll do a, a BU and JG mural yeah. tour. I think that's a great idea. If you agree, of course, we're not going to force you to do something you don't want to do. <laughs> I hope right, from well, this episode, I hope our listeners really open our eyes again if, mm. if, if it's something that they've kind of not been paying attention to, to yeah. see what's out there now. Yeah. So thank you so much, Grant. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.